The potentiometer is kind of a low-tech way of measuring soil water, but it's a very effective way, and if it's installed and used properly, it can be used to judge your irrigation system. It's important to review a little bit the properties of water to understand how potentiometer works. Water is kind of a unique chemical in, or, or molecule in that it has some unique properties. Um, one is it's a polar molecule, and as a result, it has the positive charge side and the negative charge side, which causes attraction, attractive forces. Some of those forces are cohesion, the ability or the uh, tendency for water molecules to attract each other and hold together. Another force that water has is adhesion. It tends to attract and attach to surfaces. And in the soil, that gives rise to capillarity. So once you have, and the other property that water has is a high, very high uh, surface tension compared to other liquid molecules. Again, tendency to hold together. And you see that when you, you know, pour water on a surface, it beads up. That's a combination of cohesion, soil tension. If you put water on a real clean surface, like a clean piece of glass, it'll actually spread out and form a film, and that's because the adhesive force is actually stronger than the cohesive force, and so it'll tend to spread out. And what happens when you put water in soil, because you have very small pore spaces, those forces come into play. The adhesive force causes the water to want to cling to the soil particles themselves. The cohesive force and the sur surface tension, high surface tension, causes the water to cling together. As a result, water will tend to move against the force of gravity up and we have capillarity. And basically what a tensiometer does is measure that force. If you were to completely fill the soil to, to a saturated state, Gravity would overcome all of those forces and cause water to move downward. Okay, as we remove water by gravity, by evapotranspiration, it takes more and more force to remove each further quantity of water from the soil column. And that's what the tensiometer measures. It's going to measure that force. So if we have a completely saturated soil, our tensiometer is has a gauge, it's a, basically a vacuum gauge, and it's going to show zero. As more water is removed from evapotranspiration, it requires a greater increment of force to remove the next quantity of water, and that gauge is going to start to increase. And for each type of soil, we're going to have a profile. On our sandy soils, completely saturated soil is going to show a zero. When you're getting into a critical moisture stress on, a ten, on, on these sandy soils, you're at somewhere between 7 to 12 to 15, and it's going to vary depending on the soil, how coarse or fine the sand is. And that's something, you know, there are tables available in some of the publications we've given you. You have to work out. But normally we're going to go between somewhere around 3 would be completely saturated, and somewhere around seven. And at seven, you're gonna to start to wanna to irrigate because you've depleted the available water or 50% of the available water in your soil column, okay? So that's basically a very simple device. That's how the tensiometer works. You have different lengths, again, for, you know, vegetables on a flat wood soil and a seep irrigated system. You may only need one six inch tensiometer because that's where all your root zone is. If you're working with a drip irrigated crop and you have no water table, you probably want to have two tensiometers, one at a greater depth, say a 12 or an 18 inch. This is an 18 inch, it's probably a little too deep for most vegetables, but on citrus, especially on your sandier ridge type soils, 18 inch would be a good you know, match for a six inch. You're basically you know, measuring the, the water potential between the two the, the, the shallow depth and the greater depth. So once you're shallow depth on a deep-rooted crop, the water starts to fall. You're going to watch your deeper depth, and when it gets starts getting critical there, you're going to want to fill back up that soil column between the two tensiometer depths.